So when we start exercising, we know stroke volume increases, we know heart rate increases, we know we get better at pumping up more blood, more efficient, but how the hell does any of this happen? So now we're going to look at the actual physiology beyond what exercise actually does to the heart. So this is actually what we care about and it's actually interesting to know besides we just, oh, our heart rate increases, we pump out more blood, but how the hell does that happen? So of course we have our heart. Now this is a heart at rest, it's pumping out a certain amount of blood from the left ventricle. We have all this beautiful red blood being pumped out of the heart and everything at the left ventricle. And when you start exercising, a few things happen. Now we know that the SA node up here in green, we know that the SA node controls the rhythm of the, uh, the rhythm of the heart between 60 to 100 beats per minute. And it beats that regardless at rest. And the parasympathetic activity slows it down even more at rest, and that's acetylcholine, that's through the vagus nerve, it's also the same thing, so we'll write that. Parasympathetic activity, vagus nerve, same thing. And this slows down the body, or this slows down the heart and conserves energy at rest. And an elite athlete has a stronger parasympathetic activity, that's why they have a slower heart rate. So parasympathetic, act parasympathetic activity slows the heart rate down to a little past 60, so 40 or 50. Now, when you start exercising, a few things happen. What first happens is parasympathetic activity decreases. Sympathetic activity doesn't increase at first. First, PNS decreases. And this is because since PNS is slowing down your heart rate and you want to speed up your heart rate, it makes sense to stop or withdraw your PNS act input. So now your heart rate is slow. Without PNS, your heart rate, your SA node is slowly going to start being around 100 beats per minute because it can do that anyways. And then once it gets past 100 beats per minute, your, S your uh, sympathetic activity which is epinephrine and no, well, mostly we'll just say epinephrine, adrenaline. It's epinephrine gets released from different parts of the body, gets released from the adrenal glands and whatnot, circulates and this speeds up, this helps speed up the heart rate. So this excites the heart. It's the major excitatory adrenaline. We all know what adrenaline does, it speeds up your heart rate. So adrenaline is going to speed up your heart rate past 100 beats per minute. So first your sympathetic activity decreases, that will speed up your the normal autorhythmicity of the SA node up to 100 beats per minute, then your SNS takes over. So this is what happens with heart rate. So now let's look at what happens with stroke volume. How do we know stroke volume increases? If you have this beautiful graph, stroke volume increases up to around 50. Well, here's the cardiac output. Ignore these numbers, the cardiac output. But stroke volume increases around the 40 to 50 to 60 percent of your VO2, depending what number he used in class. Now we know that, but what increases stroke volume? So stroke volume is how much blood your left ventricle pumps out with every single beat. So, so we're going to look at a few things that start happening once you start exercising. So we know the body is a closed loop, so whatever blood you pump out of the left ventricle, we turn into the right atrium. We know when you, when you start exercising, you increase your cardiac output, you pump out more blood. Now if you pump out more blood, more blood in, returns to the right atrium via what we talked about last time, draw blue, with the uh, venous return. More blood gets pumped to the right atrium. If more blood gets pumped to the right atrium, more blood falls into the right ventricle, more blood goes to the lungs, more blood goes to the left atrium, more blood ultimately, now it's red, more blood ultimately goes into the left ventricle. When more blood enters the left ventricle, which in this picture you can see the left ventricle, kind of synonymous to our box, is a, is a closed area. When more blood enters a closed area, because remember there's that door right here, that, that maestro valve, so when more blood enters a closed area, because blood enters, valve closed, you have all this blood in this contained area. When a lot of blood's in this contained area, what's going to happen with something? The pressure increases. If you have a lot of volume in a small in an area that stays the same size, pressure increases. Now, the interesting thing about this, this is called a mechanism. Do you know it's called the Frank Starling mechanism? So Frank Starling is very important. <clears throat> The Frank Starling mechanism is just saying, it's a very simple mechanism. All it's saying is when more blood enters the left ventricle, you pump out more blood. Or the heart stretches more, so you pump out more blood. So what that means is ultimately more, when more blood returns into the right atrium via venous return, more blood ultimately enters the left ventricle. And the volume of blood that enters the left ventricle is called N diastolic volume, EDV. And this makes sense because when we talk about systole and diastole in the next video, systole is the pressure of the blood, the pressure in the arteries that the heart has when the blood contracts, when, when the heart contracts. Diastole is when the heart is relaxing. When the heart is filling up with blood, it's relaxing. So at the end of diastole, 
the volume in the left ventricle is equal to a, a certain amount. When you return more blood to the heart, you return more, more blood just enters the left ventricle. That's what happens in a closed loop because you don't lose any blood. When more blood enters the left ventricles, it's true, it's a, the heart stretches. So this is kind of going back. So the heart stretches when blood enters it. So just think of a wall or a, a, a closed area or something and you think of a balloon and you put water in it so it stretches more. The more it stretches, the more it can contract and pump out forcibly. Now the example I always use is with a rubber band. Say you have this beautiful stretchy rubber band or say John has this beautiful rubber band. When you stretch this went by itself, the rubber band is just rubber band, but when you stretch it, it can, it's a, it has a certain amount of contractility, which we all know when you stretch it and someone flicks it at you, it hurts. So the more you stretch it, the more it contracts. It contracts harder with a more forcible contraction. So that's what the heart does pretty much. When it fills up with blood, the heart contracts. This is synonymous with the left ventricle. The heart will contract. And when it contracts, the more, I mean, not the heart contracts, the heart will stretch. And the more the heart stretches, it'll contract more forcibly because it, that's just the way it works. Just like a rubber band, the more you stretch a rubber band, the more it contracts. So that's essentially what happens. That, that's what increases stroke volume up to 40 to 50 to 60% of your VO2. The heart is filling up with more blood because of all these, uh, one, because of the sympathetic activity. It's pumping out more blood. <clears throat> all that vasodilation, vasoconstriction, it's pumping more blood to the muscles. The venous return we talked about is bringing more blood back to the right atrium. Since more blood's going back to the right atrium, more blood will just enter the left ventricle. When more, and that's your end diastolic volume. So your end diastolic volume increases with exercise. And when more blood enters the left ventricle, because of like our beautiful rubber band, it stretches, it contracts much more, and it hurts. And it can pump out much more blood. It does this up to 50 to 60% of your VO2. Now the Frank Starling mechanism is one. We'll just go back to this. Frank Starling mechanism is, is one mechanism that increases uh, stroke volume. So these are the mechanisms that are increasing stroke volume. Probably spelling it wrong, but you have Frank Starling mechanism. That's one that increases stroke volume, which also increases your cardiac output. If you increase stroke volume, it's just going to happen. Now, another mechanism is via calcium. The way this works is going back to anatomy one or whatever, or actually the first test, calcium causes muscle contraction, right? You need calcium in order to remove all the whole muscles, I think it's troponin from tropomyosin or tropomyosin from troponin in order to have the cross bridges in order to cause muscle contraction, right? Well, the heart is a muscle, so it's, it operates the same exact way. So in the heart, during exercise, you release calcium via, well, you know, SNS, sympathetic activity. You release calcium, just happens during exercise. And when you release more calcium, it causes more calcium will bind into the left ventricle muscles, moving tropomyosin, and thus you can have more contractions. So calcium also increases muscle contraction because with more calcium, you can contract your muscles much more forcibly because more myosin bridges can bind to actin, going back to the first test. Now the, the effect that calcium has on the heart is called anotropic. Anotropic means it doesn't have to deal with anything else. It's just by itself. So calcium has nothing to do with the frank Starling mechanism. The frank Starling mechanism happens automatically. It's just an effect of more blood entering the left ventricle, more your end diastolic volume increasing. It just happens with exercise. With exercise, you increase your blood flow, you increase your blood flow, you increase how much blood enters your left ventricle, you increase how much blood enters your left ventricle, you increase your a beautiful band, you increase the stretch, more stretch equals more contraction. So that just happens. Now, at the same time, you're also releasing calcium because it just happens when you exercise. And now calcium binding to the heart, left ventricle, is independent of Frank Starling mechanism. So calcium and Frank Starling work to increase your stroke volume. If you increase your stroke volume, you increase your cardiac output. These work to increase the efficiency of the heart when it starts exercising. Now it does that up to 50 to 60 percent of your VO2, depending on what number he said. Now after that, see this is all Frank Starling mechanism and calcium. Calcium increases the contractility, just another fancy way of saying it increases how hard it stretches like the rubber band, how, how forcibly it contracts. Now past this area, it really stagnates. Your stroke volume doesn't really increase anymore. So now your heart rate has to increase exponentially. Now we know what increases your heart rate. Your heart rate increases via SNS or epinephrine. The same thing. SNS is a sympathetic activity. And that's a, that's a nervous 
part of the oh, sympathetic nervous system. Sorry, that's a part of the heart, the nervous system. That will excite the body. It's called the fight and flight system. So it excites the body. It releases a, its main neurotransmitter is adrenaline. Well, in this case, it's releasing epinephrine as a hormone. But its main molecule is epinephrine. Epinephrine will it doesn't really te technically epinephrine isn't controlled by any nerves because this is working as a hormone in this instance. Whereas the vagus nerve innervates the heart, it actually like you have the heart, your beautiful heart. The vagus nerve is actually like right here and attaches to the brain stem. Or attaches to the what should we call it? The carotid artery. Now for S and S, for sympathetic activity, epinephrine is just released. The heart it's not controlled in a certain vein, like the vagus nerve, it controls parasympathetic activity, it's just released. Now, epinephrine will excite the heart, it'll cause the heart to contract faster, it'll cause the heart to beat faster, mostly it causes the heart to beat faster. It also increases the contractility, just like a rubber band example, but when it causes the heart to beat faster, just the cause and effect, when the heart beats faster, it pumps out more blood. When you pump out more blood, you return more heart blood to the heart. When you turn more blood to the heart, you increase the volume of the left ventricle. When you increase the volume of the left ventricle, you increase the frank cellular mechanism. So, they all, they all work together, essentially, that's what I'm saying. So, this is all epinephrine, increasing your heartbeat. Stroke, stroke volume with the frank, the frank cellular mechanism is only efficient up to so much. The reason why I don't have a picture of the show, but say you have this beautiful, brand new just making new rubber band and you want to flick it on someone well it's going to work very well because it's brand new it has all its contraction it's very elastic it, can, it has a very high contractility now i do have a picture but i don't know if bringing it up would stop this video but now say your friend joe has a very shitty old 10 year old rubber band smells horrible and it has no contraction it's just very very long and it doesn't really contract you can't really flick it at anyone because it has no force that's essentially what ha will happen to the heart if you if you stretch it too much. If you stretch the heart too much, just like a rubber band, it might it will lose its contractility and not be as efficient. And also it might break, And but the heart will never break if you stretch it too much. But <laughs> that's what happens during heart failure. Your heart stretched so much, the ventricle has gotten so huge that it just lost all of its contractility. It can't pump out as much blood any at any major extent. So the, that's the important thing to know that when you first start exercising, your PNS decreases because your PNS is what's slowing your heart rate down below 60 to 100 beats per minute. Because 60 to 100 beats per minute happens regardless. It's autoarrhythmic and PNS will slow down even more and rest to conserve energy. But once you start exercising, your PNS will decrease and PNS is also known as acetylcholine. So it can be considered anything. PNS, parasympathetic activity, vagus nerve, also the same thing. Vagus nerve controls the PNS as what, as what connects it to the carotid artery. And acetylcholine is the hormone that slows it down, slows the heart down. So they're all the same thing. So PNS decreases, acetylcholine decreases, your vagus input decreases, whatever he says. This will speed your heart rate up to the upper spectrum of the 60 to 100 to 100 beats per minute. After that, your SNS will take over. Now your SNS is adrenaline. This isn't released from a certain nerve. There's no nerve for the SNS, it's just released. And this will increase your heart rate. So it'll increase your heart rate past 100 beats per minute. Not to a huge extent, because remember you have the Frank Starling mechanism happening first, also. It happens more than the heart rate increases. So Frank Starling mechanism, you increase, going back to this video, you increase your venous return, increase your venous return, you pump more blood enters, your end diastolic volume will increase, and thus your the heart will stretch and you'll pump out a shit ton of blood more forcibly. And now another term he might use besides in diastolic volume. I'm trying to think of it, we have in diastolic volume is in systolic volume. I don't know how you might say it. But that's just how much blood leave, is in the heart after the heart contracts. And now just like the lungs, when the heart contracts, it doesn't pump out 100% of its blood. Because it pumps out 100% of its blood, it will be completely empty, it will collapse, nothing will be holding it. Or it likes to have some pressure in it. Now, with exercise, your heart increases contractility, you pump out more blood because of everything we talked about. In Frank Stein mechanism, calcium, it's calcium's entropic effect, epinephrine increases contractility also. So all these things are increasing how forcibly your heart contracts. When your heart contracts more forcibly, it pumps out much more blood. So your in systolic volume, in systolic volume, if you use that term, decreases. This is how much blood remains in your heart after you pump. You don't want this high. 
<clears throat> it's just like your atrial venous return. It's how much oxygen you're using with every time it goes to the capillaries. When you start exercising, you increase your oxygen uptake. Well, with your interstitial volume, when you start exercising, you decrease how much blood actually remains in your heart, and you're pumping out more of that blood. So all these things work to increase, in the very end effect, I can finally not use a picture, these all work to increase your cardiac output. Because remember, that is the point of exercise, that's what our heart does, it increases how much blood is going through our circulation. This is what, what we want to do, this is the point of training during exercise. And of course, everything we talked about can be increased with exercise. When you with tr with training with training your end systolic volume your end diastolic volume gets better your heart gets better at contracting because the muscles get more stiff and stronger and it's just more efficient and of course your heart rate your max heart rate doesn't increase it stays the same you're born with a max heart rate it just decreases with age but your heart rate increases more slowly at the same intensity <clears throat> but your end your your stroke volume increases exponentially remember with exercise. And that's the major factor that's causing this increased cardiac output because of end diastolic volume and increase with exercise. All this stuff increased with exercise. So what this means is next time you, so now you understand everything about the physiology of the heart and how it actually responds to exercise. And all these factors we talked about increase with exercise. That's the point of training. So you increase your end diastolic volume, increase your contractility, make your heart more stiff. It gets a little bit bigger and stronger, just like a muscle more stronger, it can contract much more forcibly. So this is everything that happens when you start exercising. So <clears throat> what this means is next time you're out jogging with your friend, you can tell them, oh, my Frank Sterling mechanism is increasing my index dog volume, which is increasing my cardiac output. So it's just cool to be able to know exactly what the hell is happening in your body. So next time you're running, tell your friend that. <clears throat>